Titus C. Drug Sovaldi and its successor. Although our investigation focused on one drug, a specialty drug, we thought it was particularly important because if America is to cure Alzheimer's, cancer, diabetes, and HIV in the days ahead, these cures must not be unaffordable and beyond the reach of millions of Americans. Cures in America must not just be for the lucky few. In the investigation, our staff reviewed 20,000 pages of company documents and conducted dozens of interviews with healthcare experts. The investigation collected data from all 50 state Medicaid programs in the District of Columbia as well as from Medicare and the Bureau of Prisons. This data is going to add significantly to the understanding of how these drugs turned the health care system upside down. I'm going to begin with my bottom line. Using Gilead's own documents, the evidence shows that the company pursued a calculated scheme for pricing and marketing its hepatitis C drug based on one goal, maximizing revenue regardless of the human consequences. There was no concrete evidence in any document, in emails, meeting minutes, or presentations, that basic financial matters such as research and development costs or the multi-billion dollar acquisition of Pharmacet, the drug's first developer, factored into how Gilead set the price. If Gilead's approach is the future of how blockbuster drugs are launched in America, it's going to cost billions and billions of dollars to treat just a fraction of the health care patients in America. Now, their own analyses showed that they were fully aware that as the prices ticked up, the number of Americans treated and cured would go down. Yet, based on our investigation, the company chose to put revenue ahead of affordability, of accessibility for millions of patients. The company knew that the prices would put treatment out of reach for millions of Americans and cause extraordinary problems for Medicare and Medicaid. Yet the company went ahead and charged $1,000 a pill for Sovaldi equal to $84,000 for a standard course of treatment. The documents show that Gilead planned from the beginning to use the Sovaldi price as a platform from which to set an even higher price for the second version of the drug, Harvoni, which they priced at more than $94,000 for one course of treatment. We are discussing today, for purposes of the Medicare program, one of the biggest drug launches since the prescription drug benefit began. And there are going to be huge costs <coughs> shared by taxpayers and seniors. In the 18 months following Sovaldi's approval, Medicare spent nearly $8.2 billion before rebates on Sovaldi and Harvoni, and the total continues to grow. While Gilead paints an optimistic picture about costs, Medicare spent more on these drugs in the first six months of 2015 than they did in all of 2014. <coughs> Our report shows that Medicare now spends more on hepatitis C drugs in about three weeks than it did in all of 2013. Now, the Medicare program is not the only one that takes a hit. Because the price was set so high, private insurers and state Medicaid programs were forced to restrict patient access in order to control the costs. Yet 
again, the expenditures were enormous. For example, despite spending more than $1 billion on hepatitis C drugs last year, state Medicaid programs nationwide treated less than 2.4 percent of the patients who are known to have the disease. In 2014, Oklahoma, with their Medicaid program, spent nearly $18 million to treat 220 people who are infected. Indiana's Medicaid program spent more than $40 million to treat 462 people. Now, even when there was significant access restrictions, when Gilead's own documents showed that it knew many patients with hepatitis C were clearly on the outside looking in, the company still made no effort, no effort, to provide discounts that would significantly ease the burden. Here's the take it or leave it deal Gilead offered. Because of Savaldi's price, the majority of state Medicaid programs were forced to make the excruciating decision to limit access to treatment. They asked Gilead for discounts that would allow them to treat more patients, cure more patients. But Gilead then set a precondition. The company said the only way they'd agree to give even a meager supplemental discount of 10 percent was if the states dropped all of their access restrictions and the states took on back-breaking costs. To be clear, that's not much of a choice at all. The Medicaid programs in this country do not have unlimited resources to pour into Gilead's bottom line. Now, it's correct that the company agreed to some discounts. However, a number of Medicaid programs informed us as recently as a few weeks ago the price remains a huge problem when you look at the number of people who need treatment. Our report estimates that at the end of 2014, more than 97 percent of Medicaid patients diagnosed with hepatitis C remain untreated. More than 700,000 Medicaid enrollees are waiting in line. With Medicaid and private insurers struggling to offer widespread access, Medicare could become the backstop that absorbs the huge cost of Gilead's drugs. People with hepatitis C might go without treatment until they qualify for Medicare, and that represents a very serious challenge for important programs like Medicare Part D. Gilead's representatives talk often about the cost per cure and the value their drug gives patients. But the company knew many hepatitis patients would need a longer course of treatment, adding up to a wholesale price of $168,000 or more. The company specifically chose not to offer them any discount or to consider the impact of the $1,000 per pill price on these patients. The documents show that it was always Gilead's plan to max out revenue and that affordability and accessibility were pretty much an afterthought. When the price did ignite a firestorm with respect to access restrictions and unhappy state officials and insurers and patient advocates, the companies didn't budge from their marketing strategy. And the documents, Gilead's own documents, show that was always part of the plan. In an email just days before the launch of Solvaldi, a company official wrote his colleagues, and I'll quote, let's not fold the advocacy pressure in 2014. Let's hold our position whatever competitors do or whatever the headlines, unquote. I'm going to wrap up by saying that our bipartisan inquiry is a case study into the marketing and pricing and launch of one company's product. A Democrat and Republican came together to investigate this issue because of its implications for the future. We know that there are going to be many more specialty drugs, and we want cures for Americans. But the question is, what's going to happen if the American people can't afford those cures? 
for Alzheimer's or diabetes, cancer. And it's also important to note today is World AIDS Day and our country needs a cure for HIV. If these cures are unaffordable for millions of our people, the Congress isn't meeting its public health responsibilities. Now, this was about finding the facts, and I know you're going to ask many questions about what comes next, but Senator Grassley and I have always worked on these issues in a bipartisan way. In introducing him, I also want to take note of the fact that the two of us introduced legislation and pushed successfully to make sure that the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services put out the first ever data with respect to physician practices. So we have a long record of working for transparency. Senator Grassley also uh, is the chair of our Whistleblowers Caucus, of which I'm, I'm part of. So it's a pleasure to work with him, and I'm going to turn it over now to Chairman Grassley. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for your very thorough discussion of our uh, 18 months of work on this issue, uh, working together as we have on so many things. Uh, and I think you can see how thorough he was in explaining uh, what we've discovered over the last uh, few months as we uh, brought this report together. So you might uh, think in terms of two reasons. I'll be relatively short because he's done a thorough job, and secondly, because I'm in the middle of a hearing before the Judiciary Committee on Puerto Rico. Uh, we started this investigation because we saw the impact the price of the drug Sovaldi was having on the marketplace, both public and private payers. We needed to better understand the pricing process because the Finance Committee is very uh, responsible for policy related to two very large public programs, Medicare and Medicaid, and you heard uh, Senator Wyden make that very clear uh, in his, as he finished up here. What I believe we learned from our work is that the marketplace lacks appropriate signals on three key opponents. Payers have a limited opportunity to know the price, the volume, and the efficacy of a new drug entering the market. These three questions come up. What is the price of a new drug? What is the volume of patients who will use the new drug? And lastly, how much does a new drug advance the standard of care? The marketplace has little time to react, and in the case of Savaldi, the marketplace reacted very, very badly. There were numerous access limitations put into place in reaction to the price and volume and the efficacy of the drug. Policymakers should begin a discussion of what to do next. This report is not a policy study. Let me emphasize, this report is a case study that should encourage further conversations along the lines of what Senator Wyden has already said, bipartisan and with a great deal of transparency, with also considering the need of the future of drug uh, development uh, to uh, help us cure other diseases. One area for discussion is how to give the marketplace far greater transparency to anticipate the arrival of a blockbuster drug like Savaldi. And you've also heard Senator Wyden mention that in past, our working together, transparency has been a very important tool for us to accomplish some goals. Not the only tool, but a very important tool. Um, once uh, one area for discussion is how to give the marketplace this transparency, uh, particularly to anticipate the arrival of a blockbuster drug like Savaldi being an example. The federal government should do all it can to advance research that produces blockbuster drugs that can be life-changing for people with challenging conditions with today's limited remedy. 
But the federal government is also a major player, payer for those drugs. Uh, we are $18 trillion in debt. So what we spend on Medicare and Medicaid ought to get a lot of attention. When we see the market reaction to Savaldi, uh, especially the limitations on access, and without a whole lot of concern, as Senator Wyden has suggested, that the company didn't take that into consideration, we have to be concerned because access is very important. It is a delicate balance, then, between federal government's role as a regulator of innovation and a payer for that innovation. Thank you. And I'll stay a few minutes for questions if there's Softball any. Softball questions, welcome. Let's talk about whatever you're interested in. Yeah. Um, I guess primarily for Senator Grassley, for both of you, yeah, do you think that other uh, Republicans are you know, starting to become more, more willing to make changes to drug prices? You've often, you know, we've heard the argument that we need to reward innovation and that sort of thing. Do you think that that's starting to change among Republicans? And do you, do you also hope that the administration takes action uh, where they can? Well, I would hope that this uh, study itself, I would hope this study itself would promote discussion of this. And as I just said in my remarks, that's, uh, that's what our motivation is, but our motivation is also to think within the industry, to think about things other than just pricing. I, I would only add, if I agree with Chairman Grassley, my hope is the fact that this has been a bipartisan investigation, that this inquiry will be a wake-up call in terms of the challenges ahead, not only have we seen Medicare and Medicaid and thousands and thousands you know, of patients be put in an unsustainable position? I mean, you look at what Medicare and Medicaid are paying to treat just a fraction of the people who are suffering, and then we say these specialty drugs are the wave of the future. That's why Senator Grassley and I wanted to dig so deeply into the documents that we have used in this report. Because yes, it's one drug, but this is the future. And my hope is that this will be a wake-up call on both sides of the aisle, that this is going to be a huge challenge for the American health care system in the days ahead. Let, let me start with their words. In virtually every discussion of pharmaceutical prices, you can almost set your clock by it. Those that advocate high prices say we had to do it because of research and development. We had to do it because, for example, in the case of Gilead, they had to purchase a multi-billion multi dollar purchase of Pharmacet. So we thought that those were relevant issues to dig into. And we did not find one single document, not one, that raised those issues as the rationale for the prices that were charged. And we think that is a part of the debate that ought to be considered in the future. I encourage you to look at the chart on page 30, and you can have a chance to look at the type of conversations that uh, the companies was having when they were pricing their drugs. Uh, and uh, it seems to me that you have to have payers have the same tools uh, to use. In other words, uh, I, I think for my part, I want this uh, report that we put out to speak for itself and for people to study that. And then maybe uh, two or three months from now, you might ask us the same questions again. Senator Grassley and I thought, heaven forbid, that to do something bipartisan 
what you needed to do was to actually have an independent fact-finding you know, effort. That's what this legislation, excuse me, that's what this report is all about. This is not a policy you know, document. And there are, are presidential candidates who have advanced uh, various kinds of ideas. That's not what this report's about. I mean, it's a matter of public record how we voted on, on past proposals. But we thought, since this is the wave of the future, it'd be one thing if you said, well, you know, these prices for Solvaldi and Harboni were really high and people were hurting, but this is kind of a one-shot thing. I'm telling you, this is the future. The future is going to be about specialty drugs. Some of them will be Part D drugs. Some of them won't be uh, Part D drugs. I'd like, for example, and the chairman and I have talked about this, to have a discussion about value. Well, one of the questions about value is people are going to have to be able to afford them. And that's what we have seen in this situation where they couldn't. But was there any discussion of value in the documents that you uh, investigated? I mean, you said that there wasn't anything in there about pricing it based on R&D or about um, the cost of buying homicide. Uh, was there any discussion among the executives of that about the same price at a level you, 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 you can read the report. I don't believe that there was any discussion about value uh, specifically in those um, documents. What I, what I can tell you is that they will tell you that this is something people should be happy about because they're going to say that it's a cure, but people have to be able to afford it. If you can't afford it, then how does that represent a good value for both taxpayers and patients? Can I define value uh, th the way I'd like to have you uh, consider it? We consider value in a lot of other, uh, we're beginning, at, well, maybe we have for five or seven, eight years, we've considered value to some extent. Now we're moving towards it uh, by 2018 and reimbursement of a lot of other uh, aspects of health care. Uh, I'd like to have you consider my use of value in those same terms. One last one for the road. You all done? Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you. I'm going okay. to go back to Great. I can stick around if anybody needs anything so, else. Thank you. I'll be back.